Good morning and welcome to worship with Asbury United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor John, and this is our weekly worship service. We meet in this electronic space every week at 9 a.m. Um, join us in the uh, sanctuary, the physical building at 10 a.m. at 2200 Lake Lansing Road, and we'll worship together. All right, let's go to scripture. I'll be right back with the message. Let's check. Good morning and welcome to Asbury's online service. Just a couple announcements for today. There's a mission team meeting at uh, the church on August 23rd at 6.30 p.m. if you are interested in being a part of Asbury's missions. On September 12th, we will be having a church and community barbecue following church service. Please feel free to invite any friends or family to enjoy great fellowship following our worship. Thank you and have a great week. Welcome to Worship with Asbury. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Scripture today is from Hebrews 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the fifth and final message in the series. Uh, the series is called The Games, uh, a series of messages where we draw from the wisdom of the, the Olympics, the Olympic Games, 
and what we look at what the ancient writers of the Bible said and, and how they related to the ancient games. And so we're, today we're talking about the agony of defeat and the thrill of victory. Now the thrill of victory is born out of the agony of defeat or <laughs> agony in general. I mean, even, if, even if the agony is the, the four years of training, we talked about training a, a few weeks ago, the, the agony of getting up daily, the agony of sacrificing everything else in your life for the thing that you're striving for, that kind of agony only leads to the sweetness of the victory. But there's, there are really real, uh, there's real agony in life, and you know that. And there's agony in our, in our defeats and our failures. And, and through that, we can, we can learn things. Now, we all know that it's very easy to quit. You know, when we get to the point in life or in any given circumstance where we come up to some resistance or we try something and we fail and we um, attempt, attempt something and we get defeated, it would be so easy to quit. It'd be so easy to walk away and say, it's not worth it, I'm not doing it anymore. But then I say, why does failure get to have the final word? Why does difficulty get to be the dominant force in our life? I don't want failure to be the, the dominant force in my life. I, I accept failure in my life because that's how I learn, but it's not going to be the last word. Tell me, have you ever invested weeks or months or years into something and, and just never see fruit from it or just not see the results that you want from it? Well, of course we all have. We've all experienced this agony. We've all experienced disappointment. We've all experienced failure. So where is your agony? Where, where is your defeat? Because when you can identify where your agony is, where your, your suffering is, where your, where your failure is, then you begin to understand the, the pathway that you need to take for your, the, the thrill of your victory. The, the, the path to your success is right through the midst of your agony and through the midst of your defeat. In the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah uh, prophesied about the, the Son of Man coming. Um, and he didn't know the name Jesus, but uh, we look and we read it, and clearly he's, he's foreseeing uh, what Jesus would come to be. And in that scripture, in Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 5, it says, He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, like one who, from whom we hide our faces, he was despised, he was esteemed not. Surely he took our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Isaiah continues, Yet we consider him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he, he was pierced for our transgressions, and he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that, that brought peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. This is is the agony that Jesus went through. This is the, the agony that, that Jesus suffered and the defeat that Jesus suffered. And, and we know that Jesus won the sweetest victory. In uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 10 and 11, it says that Jesus was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Then in Luke chapter 24, Jesus explains that no prophet is accepted in his own hometown. That was the part of the scripture where he went back to his hometown and he was preaching and he was teaching. And what he said made the people there so angry that they were going to take him to the edge of a cliff and throw him off. These are the people that he grew up with. These are the people that knew him. And the things that he was saying <laughs> made them so angry. And this must have felt like such a rejection and such a defeat. But Jesus didn't quit. Jesus didn't give up. Jesus, in, in the midst of this defeat, kept going. He persevered, like we talked about last week. He endured and eventually, like I said, would find the sweetest victory. Now, it wasn't all bad, right? There was times when people flocked to Jesus. People, he would draw big crowds, um, but unfortunately, it was usually when there was something in it for them. Whether they needed medical attention, a meal, or a miracle, they, they would come and get that. But when Jesus started talking about forgiveness, when Jesus started talking about uh, love instead of retribution, when Jesus started talking about picking up your cross 
and following him daily, then the people started to scatter and then people were uh, nowhere to be seen. And then when Jesus was finally suffering on the cross, only a couple people remained, even his closest disciples, his, the apostles, they all went away and he was rejected by everybody. But through all this, through all of this failure and through all this agony, Jesus modeled love. And what is love? Love is deciding to put someone else's best interest ahead of your own selfish self-interest. You see, Jesus showed us that it's about what you choose to do. It's not what you feel. Now, love isn't that feeling. Love isn't a thing that we, isn't an emotion. Love is our choices. And Jesus chose to reach out to those who are on the margins. Jesus chose to forgive those who the rest of the world said was unforgivable. Jesus was the one that offered unconditional love and forgiveness to everybody. So tell me, what is your agony? What is your defeat? What is the thing that, that is weighing you down? Well, whatever it is, we have to do something with it. And we can do one of two things. We can either, one, uh, we can persist and we can work our way through them, or we can do nothing and quit and just let the failure, let the, let the agony have the final word over our life. But if we want to glorify God, it's the persistence, it's the pushing through, it's the, the doing what we have to do to get through the thing that we're facing. That's the thing that is going to, to glorify God. It's going to point people to God. It's going to demonstrate that even in our powerlessness, God will come alongside us and will give us the victory. You see, when we suffer loss, we use that. We, we, we take that, the feeling of loss and we use it as fuel to prepare, propel us to uh, a victory. And we, we use that to motivate us. We, we learn from it, we grow from it, we do new things because we know now what not to do. We gain a new strength and a new wisdom when we've been through difficulty and pain and agony and defeat. And this is the whole message of the gospel. It's the victory of life over death. It's the, the de victory, it's victory over defeat. It's, it's we, we face loss, we face death, our own death, but then we have the power of life over all that. And oftentimes in, in funeral services, we read this from, from the letter to the Corinthians, where, O oh, death, is your victory, where, O oh, death, is your, your sting. Because Christ is, has given us victory over everything, including death. So like I've said a few times before, the, the worst thing that we face is never our last thing. So when we suffer a, 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 the agony of defeat, that's not the end of the story. Christ promises that he gives us power over everything so that when we get through it, we can give glory to God. So I'll ask you again, where is your agony of defeat? Where is your difficulty because that's where you're going to find the, the thrill of victory. We find our path to victory through that very thing that we're facing. The, there's an old adage, you know, that we don't avoid obstacles in the path. The obstacle is our path. That's where we learn. That's where we are tested. That's where we grow and become stronger. And when we do that, we, again, show the glory of God and what God can do in and through those of us who are weak, and that's, that's all of us. That's you and, and that's me. You see, you'll never know the impact you'll have on the lives of those who see your example. When they see the things that you have gone through and the things that you have endured through and the things that you've persisted through, the, the agony that you've been in and you've come out on the other side, other side still with your faith intact, that is inspiring. I have seen so many of you face so many difficulties and yet you have the joy of Jesus inside of you. You have the love of God living inside of you. I, I've had friends lo lose, their, lose children. I've had uh, people face terrible disease. I know people who are currently going through terrible disease right now and yet they endure and they persist and they bring glory to God. There's a parable in Matthew 25 that talks about the sheep and the goats and how we'll be divided at the end of time and we'll be judged by the way we interacted, the way we took care of each other. But the thing is, we may not have done very well so far in this life, but we can always turn it around. You see, our, 
our last failure doesn't have to be the final word in our life. We can always turn toward God. We can still persist. We can still strive for that victory. So, my friends, let me, let me remind you of that scripture one more time from Hebrews. It says, Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that's so easily entangled, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. For who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. My friends, Jesus invites us into his presence. So I invite you into discipleship. I invite you into a lifelong process of ever growing closer to Jesus through, through faith, through perseverance, through the love that God has already given you. All right, friends, let's, let's continue on with worship. When our confidence is shaken in beliefs we thought secure, When the spirit in its sickness seeks but cannot find a cure God is active in the tension of a faith not yet mature solar systems void of meaning freeze the spirit into stone always our Searches lead us to the ultimate unknown. Faith must die or come full circle to its source in God alone. In the discipline of praying When it's hardest to believe In the drudgery of caring When it's not enough to grieve Faith maturing learns acceptance of the insights we receive. God is love and thus redeems us in the Christ we crucify. This is God's eternal answer to the world's eternal why. May we in this faith maturing be content to live and die. All right, thanks so much for being with us today. Uh, this is the end of the sermon series. Next week, we're going to start a, a five-week series on, on prayer, when the church comes together in prayer. 
Uh, our church is, is facing some big decisions and we need to be in prayer about it. We need to come together and, and seek God's wisdom. So we're gonna be looking at different aspects of that through the month of September. All right, friends, go in peace and may the God of peace be with you all. Amen. So I'll ask you again, where is your agony? Where is your defeat? We get... <laughs> at the end of, at, at the legs. Ha, ha, ha.